Today I'm here at the World Rocketry Team and you are the leader. Uh, I'm Lawrence, hi, I'm the project leader of Project Nexus uh, from Bar Rocketry. Uh, we are, we are a, a Munich-based um, student group uh, that develops um, this bi-liquid rocket that we are planning to launch at uh, this year's Zero competition. Um, the rocket itself is a five and a half meter long, 20 centimeters uh, in diameter and uh, is propelled by uh, liquid oxygen and ethanol, uh, which is combusted here in our 3D printed Inconel combustion chamber. And we are producing around three kilonewtons of thrust. Um, our target is um, roughly two to two and a half kilometers of altitude, um, a little less than we planned originally, um, but due to some yeah, so minor testing um, delays uh, we had to downgrade, but um, we're anyway super excited um, to be launching in the next couple of days and um, seeing this rocket af uh, fly after, after three years. Um, we have our ethanol tank, which is uh, 100 uh, bar in flight with um, its own pressurization set, uh, system. It gets fed by two, uh, 300 bar in nitrogen um, from our pressurization segment, segments and is then down-regulated to 100 bar. In the LOX tank, we have 63 bar, uh, and it has also its own pressurization system, um, also fed by the 300 bar of nitrogen. Uh, in the main, in the en uh, engine interstage, uh, we have our self-made, um, self-developed liquid oxygen main valve, um, which is full cryogenic rated, uh, and we have a, a COTS um, ethanol main valve. Our mass flow on the lock side is controlled with um, a cavitating venturi, which is a passive way, a simple and passive way to control mass flow. Um, basically meaning we are constructing the flow diameter in the pipe to a very small diameter um, and then expanding it again. Thereby we can control um, our mass flow that goes into the chamber. The chamber itself is, um, as I said, 3D printed in Cornell uh, 718. Uh, it's regeneratively cooled. The ethanol enters the chamber at the nozzle exit and then travels around the uh, engine contour in 55 cooling channels towards the injector. And then in our um, triplet impinging injector, uh, the ethanol is injected together with the logs into the chamber and we are having combustion. Why did you choose an impinging injector? Was it the easiest and the best performing? Um, to be honest, yes. Um, when we started out the project and we weren't sure what imp uh, injector to use, we started on developing a pintle injector, a swirl injector and an impinging injector. And then after some weeks of development, we sat together and decided, okay, what is the way to go? And um, we decided for the impinging because um, it's the simplest um, and uh, it's from manufacturing tolerances and so it's the most forgiving one uh, and it was capable we were capable of doing it and with our limited experience on bi-liquid rockets but since this is our first one uh, we decided on going for for simple and um, a little bit less less advanced than others um, but to get the experience and in the future then we we are going to go up and um, hopefully in the next or in second to next iteration we are then transitioning to pintle injector with um, may or may not uh, throttling, for example.